The World Health Organization says this is not a drill and that governments need to act now to stop the spread of the virus. How far should those measures go? Joining me in our Washington studio is Shweta Chakraborty. She's been assessing that. She's a risk and behavioral scientist and joins me now. Shweta, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. The reason we're seeing such a big hike in numbers in the U.S., is it because this thing is spreading at a faster pace or is it because perhaps more people are now getting tested? It's exactly the latter. So what we're finding is that we didn't have the diagnostics tests in place and that's its own story. The fact that the CDC didn't have the budget that it needed to be able to be proactive in preventing this type of outbreak from really getting out there and a critical component of that is testing for it because in, in addition to improving patient outcomes, knowledge is power with getting tested, not just so we know how to treat the patient, but also so that those who work in this space, whether you're an epidemiologist, a healthcare professional, whatever um, value you add towards containing this outbreak and mitigating against societal harm, you need that knowledge. You need to know what the testing is looking like and what the spread is looking like. And that's something that the CDC wasn't prepared for because of the budget cuts. So how does the most powerful country in the world with the strongest economy in the world, how is it not prepared and doesn't have enough testing kits? That is just mind boggling to me. Yes, and so once we start testing, we're going to see that most likely the denominator is going to increase and which means that the fatalities will probably reduce, right? Because there probably are so many people out there that have symptoms that haven't been tested and appropriated to the coronavirus. Now, why the US doesn't already know this and why the, for that reason, the mortality rate isn't as low as we will probably see it become mm -hmm. once this testing starts is because despite being the best public health care system in the world and having some of the best and the brightest minds, we are so much better off, if you can imagine, despite that, compared to other countries that have weaker primary health care systems, what they must be dealing with. But we don't have an excuse. We absolutely should have been so much more proactive on top mm -hmm. of this, and we should have had all of the information that we needed to really give better information to those lo localities that could then make decisions sure. about what makes the most sense. So, you know, we talk to a lot of Americans on a daily basis, you know, family members, friends, people are actually worried. And you go to the grocery store, or the drugstore down the street, you can't find hand sanitizer, you can't find disinfectant wipes. How worried should Americans be about this situation getting even worse? Right. We need to really be appropriately measured on this because we tend to be complacent when nothing is going on. So and then panic. Before, right. So <laughs> an outbreak occurs. Up until then, nobody was even taking their flu vaccines, despite public health officials insisting on the importance of doing so to protect yourself, your family, your community. And so there's a complacency there when something isn't you know, out there. Mm -hmm. But once it's out there, it's exactly that. Then there's an overreaction. So there's somewhere in between that is the right appropriate action to take. And what's important to remember is really the CDC guidelines. And it's important not to hoard those uh, materials that are really needed by healthcare professionals, because unfortunately, again, we don't have everything that we need. The CDC, especially at this time, and those that are at the front lines, we didn't have that budget and that proactive preparedness that would have benefited those on the front lines. Therefore, we cannot just hand them out to everybody. We need to be careful and allocate accordingly and prioritize those who need it the most, which right now are those who are fighting the virus at the front lines, putting their own health and safety at risk, but they are the ones who deserve the face masks. So please don't unnecessarily wear those. The CDC says, CDC says very clearly, mm -hmm. only wear face masks if you are exhibiting symptoms. And in terms of hoarding supplies, two weeks of supplies, fine. Um, if you begin to show symptoms, be sure that you'll be able to take care of yourself if you are required to be isolated. Beyond that is an overreaction. All right, good advice there. Thank you so much. What up?